Good evening, everybody. I hope you're doing well. It's Lee, and I'm joined by Steve. Steve, how are you? Doing great. Doing great. Just watching watching football like I always do. So, yeah. Great stuff. I've just literally just finished work. I'm at work. Uh, we've got a lot to rattle through tonight. We have everything from the press conference that Eddie Howe said. Those wonderful journalists, which I think Steve wants to have his say on <laughs> very, very shortly. Uh, all the latest transfer rumours, the news and what have you. And we might be joined by uh, another guest a little bit later on uh, during this live show. So welcome, everybody. Uh, get your comments in, get your chats in, yeah, what your recommendations are for player transfers, your thoughts on it. We want to know all of that. But um, we are live. We are live on Twitch. We are live on Facebook as well. But um, what we're going to do is talk about the news, uh, press comments stuff first, and then we'll move on to transfer rumours. That's Kit, which has got a lot of headlines, especially on Twitter. And then we'll start and move on to the Arsenal game. Um, yes. We're going to look at the tactical pad, so we'll get that out as well. So, yeah, uh, welcome, everybody, if you're just tuning in. And if you can smash that like. Come on, smash it. Be wonderful. Uh, please do. And we've got our first comment in as well. Evening, Lane Steve. Evening, Jordy. Tune for life. None. F the journalists. Yes, Leo. Wolfson, hiya. You all right? And we've got... Uh, John Olsen has been upgraded his membership as well, which is great. And the members are actually going to get a members video off me in the next year or two with uh, some updates on that, actually. But Quick we'll, thing we'll about the journalists, actually, I just wanted to say about that comment. Is it just yeah. me or do you think journalism has changed a lot, like this modern journalism? I don't feel like a lot of journalists are actually fulfilling their job line and their description. Like they're just they're, they're giving out opinions to me, a real journalist digs in and goes and sees the story and like actually investigates. I feel like a lot of these Twitter journalists, they're just saying their opinion. And it's nothing, it, 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 it's it's just the, it's a lazy narrative. That's all I wanted to say about that. Like, yeah, Steve, Steve, we'll start there. You, you've, you've kicked it off then. So um, you, we'll, we'll, we'll begin there because Steve's brought that up. So it's all it's all gone around this, which is the a kit. Yes. That is, and it's not official. It's a leaked kit. Yeah. But they're pretty accurate when these leak, leaked kits come out. So because it's, it's a massive uproar, because it's white with the green surroundings, which is very similar to uh, what a lot of people think is the Saudi Arabian shirt, when I first said it, Steve will know this on the WhatsApp. I said it looks a bit like the Irish away top. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen Jeff Hendrick in it plenty of times, and it's very similar. So I, I modelled it off the Irish uh, national team. But first of all, there's rumours. Obviously, Carl's done a video on the channel that it could be um, Golf Saudi Arabia. Does it really matter? As Newcastle mm. fans, who the sponsor is? As long as it looks nice on the shirt, that's my biggest thing. As long as it looks good. That's all Steve cares about. I'm talking about like a human rights element and what have you, because oh. you know that you know that's coming. You know that's gonna happen. Oh yeah, oh 100 percent. No, um, I it, yeah. When I first saw the shirt, I was thinking Ireland. I was thinking I wasn't. I wasn't really thinking the Saudi Arabia. I think it's cool. I th I, I like the shirt personally. Um, you got any, you got any problems with it personally? You got any problems no. with it? Copy and Saudi. I haven't. No. And do you know what? No, I don't. In some parts of me wants to embrace it. Yes, I know the Saudi regime uh, got a lot of human rights issues, but you know you've got to you've got to teach. You know the far 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 Asian. Um, got to be careful how I say this here. You know, like the people in Asia, how they Westernize, how we do it, and how we can learn yeah. from their cultures as well. I've yeah. got no problems with it. I've got no problems if it's got Aramco or Gulf Saudi Arabia or Arabic writing. I'm not bothered personally. To me, football is the international, it's the most popular sport in the world. So you're going to have fans from Saudi Arabia, India, China, England. Like, it's, it's, it's the world's game. It's the world's game. So to me, it's like you make a white and green. If You know, we might have a, we might have a Brazil kit. You know what I mean? So to me, it's just the international, like, I, I, I don't have a problem with it. Like... We, we've had a green kit before. It was, what, three years ago? Two, three years? It was the green Puma one with that thing on the top. Yeah, so. Very dark green, just literally last season. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then, what was it, 2001, 02 or something like that? It was the white and teal kind of thing. Um, I'm looking at the shirt from 97, the purple, orange, or purple-ish. And then there's green on it. Like, we've played in green before. It's not. 
as long as it's not red and white. <laughs> to, to be honest, um, we used to be all... red and white when we first huh? formed. We used to be red and white when we first yeah. formed. Um, Andrew, for your comment there, says uh, the the Gulf Saudi is a good call. Not sure if you're aware, there is a two week Saudi golf competition at Slaley Hall in the next coming weeks. Yeah, which is not far from me. Um, just doing the road. Mm. Um, but yeah, the, the journalists. <laughs> a, the titles in there. The usual type: Miguel Delaney. Oliver Holt, mm. and obviously Oliver Holt has been caught out with a previous tweet, like oh, many yeah. people do in the, in the past few years, where he said, "Doesn't matter where the money comes from, Chelsea's Russian, West Ham's English, and so on, so on." Yeah. It's, it's hypocritical. And Miguel Delaney, you mentioned about um, good journalism just before, Steve. It's it's what's ironic is that they ex there's two things I want to pull up here. What's ironic is these journalists are using a platform which still technically right now is still partly, small partly, Saudi-owned. I know it's yep. obviously going to be sold very, very soon. So yeah, they're using a platform on a Saudi-owned at this present moment. I know Eli, what's he called? He's going to buy... Elon Musk, yeah. yeah. He's going to buy it. Well, that's going to happen. But right now, it's part Saudi. And then they're gaining from this leak, which potentially might not even be a true kit. And they're profiting, they're profiting yeah. on Newcastle's news, bad news. They're a rumor, a rumor. They're making money off Newcastle United. They're the hypocrites. Yeah. Because yeah. when they put an article out, what's, what's, what are people going to do when they see a headline? What are people going to do, Steve? Going to click on it. Bingo. <laughs> and what does that do? It gets you money. It gets you money on the it website. So whether you post it on BBC or... ESPN, or it doesn't matter. The whole reason why yeah, they put the articles out because you make money. You make money yeah. off Newcastle United. So, how can you then be critical, especially later this year when a lot of these journalists are going to go to a similar kind of country in Qatar in, in December? Exactly. They're, and and never mind all the ones that do sports coverage of the F1 races or boxing or wherever. And they're sports. going to be making money because they're working. Out in guitar, yeah. Double standards, double standards, and a lot of them have got previous tweets, as I say. And you are right; there, there is some fantastic journalists who are out there. But I feel like it's a dying art, though. I feel like it's a dying yeah. art. You can only really, you could probably look on one hand, Newcastle journalists who you who you probably respect. I'm not going to have that debate. Who's a good journalist? Who's not? But in terms of, you are right going out and finding out stories instead of just jumping on a headline saying, oh, this is bad. This is bad. Don't buy this. England, you know, Newcastle is turning Saudi, you know, hypocritical, the human rights and all of this sort of stuff. Had a minute, had a minute, had a minute. I know. Everything that I've just said, and us as a fan base, I personally don't care. I'm going to say that. I don't care what's written on the front. At the end of the day, it's my football club. I didn't choose who the owners are. I didn't choose Mike Ashley. I didn't choose Sir John Hall before that, and so yeah. on and so on. I support Newcastle United, literally behind us in terms of park, 30-second walk. I yeah. support the club. It doesn't matter who. It doesn't matter who the next owners are. Yes, you've got to take some acknowledgement of where they come from and what they've done and how they've made the money. Granted, we've all got to learn that. We've all got to learn from each other. But that shouldn't be placed on the fans, Steve, should it? No, because we don't we don't have we don't have a system like in German in German football where it's fifty plus one, um, where the fans even at the big clubs like Bayern München, Borussia Dortmund, Leverkusen, whatever those fans get a say, a majority say, in what the club does. Um, that has its pros and its cons, but we're talking about an English club here, yeah. So that's that that that's the thing, really. Um, it's mad because there's another thing as well as that. We've got people on YouTube who are criticizing uh, fairly, fairly big YouTubers who are criticizing Newcastle's kit when their own team copied their own owners. I'm talking about Chelsea here. I'm talking about Rory Jennings. Yes, Rory, yourself. Mm -hmm. Come out and said Newcastle are doing this, doing that. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're a Chelsea fan, and Chelsea haven't just done it once. They've done it twice, modeling off Russia. And look at look at if you want to look at the world right now, right this moment, look look what Russia. Hello, Joshua. Look what look what Russia are doing to the nearby nearby countries. Right. Look what they're doing to 
killing people left, right, and centre. Yep. So it's, it's it, again, it's double standards. Yep. To be fair about Rory, though, I I watch a lot of them. I like I I, I you know I watch a lot of football YouTube just because I'm an outsider and I like perspective and I like fan content. Yeah, I I definitely disagree with Rory on that take. Though. I watched it at work yesterday and I was just like, what in the hell is this? I'm like, oh. It was it was so bad, and to be fair to him, he's never he's been always anti Abramovich, whatever that means to him. But I just to me, I it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, PSG, their owners have so last it, year, last year United. Sheffield United did it, green and gold, yeah. So look, because we're going to be influenced, I think we can pretty much say that where our owners plow the money in. They'll want to stamp their authority somewhere, where it's a stadium, where it's a the training, a new training ground gets named after X, Y, and Z in Saudi Arabia or something, because it'll make Newcastle United more money because they can sell this product back to people over thirty million people in Saudi Arabia, who will no doubt a lot of them will adopt Newcastle United as yeah. their Premier League team. It's a marketing thing. It's a a pride of what you represent, like the you know the Saudi flag and stuff, and. I, I just don't I don't have a problem with it. Ultimately, at the end of the day, like a football shirt, I just want it to look good. Um, I'll buy. I have at least a hundred shirts. I like I like I like football kits. Make a nice one. That's all I really care about. Last that's- question before before we move on to um, some other news is that is this story a non-story in journalists or overhyping it because they'll get clicks? Yes. Totally agree. It, it, it's it's like I said. I just think journalism's a dying art. I think a lot of it is, you know, what the big thing is for me is that you don't even have to be a critical thinker or investigate as a journalist anymore. You just got to have reactionary takes that'll get clicks. Any publicity is good. But uh, any publicity is good. Good publicity. So why would you go through all the effort, go into these countries and finding out stories or? you know, what an investigative journalist does when you could just put up an article online on, in the comfort of your chair. Why would anyone go and be an ev- investigative journalist if you can get even more clicks and likes if it's just reactionary stuff? That's my it's take on it. Mental. It's blown. It's blown out. Of the, and I haven't really said much. I mean, I put a personal tweet out, but it's exactly how I've said on video tonight. They're having a personal game. They're getting money from bad news from Newcastle United, which is ironic. Absolutely ironic. Yeah. Crackers. Right. Next story. And this is a um, – we'll move on. This is a daft one, a proper daft one. And it, we're talking about common sense here, Steve, is that Alan at Maximum has actually been charged for two breaches of the FA's kit and advertising regulations. Basically, you can see that. I'm not going to read all of that. Because, of, because he's shown, you know – the brand that he wears, his hairband, and he's obviously it's Gucci, and he's I think has he changed it recently, or is it still Gucci? However, yeah. he's actually getting charged. I mean, there's there's bigger things in life uh, that are happening than this. I mean, this is just petty. It's absolute just petty. What's what's he going to get if he actually gets charged? And do you know what? Do you know what? What makes us laugh about this is that if you remember. When Nicholas Benter, I think it was the Euros of the World Cup, he pulled down his shorts and he had a sponsor, if you remember. And then, yeah. was ever UEFA or FIFA find him a hundred thousand? Whereas people like people have been found guilty, and I think it was Luis Suarez on Patrice Evra, less money for being guilty as a racist, alleged racist, I must say, yeah. than someone wearing a sponsor. It's mental man, it's just. I remember a few years ago when. Uh, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang was with Dortmund, and he got fined for doing the Batman celebration, and because it was a spot, like you know what I mean. It's just to me the thing with the ASM thing. It's like it's all about priorities. The FA don't have the priorities straight. Um, that's about as does, does that need to become public? That because that's just petty. I mean, I'm gl- I'm kind of glad it came out because. It just shows how it shows how petty they are. Um, why take the FA seriously? A lot of the a lot of the footballing associations around the world don't do a good job enough, in my opinion. Here in the U.S., we don't do a good enough job. I think your FA is pretty 
it, I, a lot of the things just don't make sense. France, it's terrible. Um, it's it's. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, and I like the fact that in that statement it says that he allegedly wore. <laughs> allegedly. Yeah. Clearly did. Clearly did. And I think it's just it's just it's not a story. It's just why would you want to bring that public? I mean, it's, it's daft. And Jody's made a great point there. It's because the FA um, aren't making any yeah. Dollar. Yeah, it's 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 pretty much down to that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, good. Yeah. Um, Maga Drown. A great name. That it's a fantastic name. Um, should keep <laughs> the hair off, but yeah, that's a bit daft. But let's get on the presser. Um, Eddie Howe on safety. There's a couple of things I'll read through here. Um, this is Eddie Howe on the safety. He said it's it's hugely important for us. Your day to day environment is so important, and we're trying to attract world class players to the club. In doing so, you need to give them an environment that matches their status. So that's obviously going to now be Premier League football, and then going on to a little bit more. I think it's been an incredible ride. Thinking back to the first games, it was a difficult time, especially after Cambridge. More than that in a second. The biggest compliment I can pay the fans is that they stuck with us when the chances were getting out of trouble were slipping away. Now, after that game, I don't know if you recall on this, Steve, that me and Johnny weren't very happy bunnies doing them video videos. Um, I wasn't either, yeah. I mean, we were effing and blinding because, in all honesty, after Cambridge, I thought, nah. I know that there's money going to be spent in January, but after the Cambridge FA Cup defeat and embarrassing one, I thought, nah, not happening. We've got to face reality here. We could go down even with loads of money. Yeah. Were you worried about that time? Oh, yeah. I said before, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was the Watford 1-1 game after that game, I believe. Mm -hmm. I said after, I said after, regardless of when it was, when the Watford, when Joao Pedro scored that uh, header, I said that we were going down. Like, I, I was very, very... You know, very blunt about it. I just I didn't see the fight in the players, and I thought Eddie Howe would do a good job. But to me, with 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 uh, with sports and stuff, it's not only a physical test of uh, eleven versus eleven or whatever. It's also a mental, and I didn't think the players had the mental, especially with the injuries. Especially with the injuries. I mean, Callum Wilson. We haven't had him for probably what two thirds of the season, maybe. I mean, it maybe not that much, but geez, we haven't we haven't had a goal scorer in Trippier. You know, did his ACL five games in. I thought we were screwed, but um, it huge credit to, to the players because they proved me entirely wrong. Um, yeah, and Eddie Howe is front and center, and that positive, um, you know, the direction we're going as a club is just it's absolute it's remarkable. I didn't see it coming. I didn't I didn't know. It's incredible! It's incredible how far Eddie Howe's come. I know that yeah. the the signings have helped, but we needed more than that. It's sensational from where we've come, the run that we've that we've gone on. And hey, if we get beat off Arsenal Monday night, hey, if we get beat off Burnley, job's done. We're safe. And yeah. we're, you know, it's fantastic. He was asked about that um, coming towards the end of the season. Eddie Howe's gone out and said we're really keen to end the, to end the season with two very good performances. It's so important we we'll perform in our last home game. And leave a good feeling with our supporters for the summer and uh, whet their appetite for what's coming next year. Obviously, mm. um, five hours behind, Steve, so it's a good time for you to watch the game, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it'll be a three o'clock kickoff for me. So I'm excited about up. that. You don't, have to get up with you don't have to get up at daft o'clock yeah. um, for the Arsenal game. We are talking more a little bit about the Arsenal. Um, we'll look at them. Um, we're going to bring out the tactical pad. A little bit later and discuss both teams and clashes and where key battles could be won mm. as well. Arsenal do have a couple of injuries um, in suspensions, but we will talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. Speaking of injuries, ahead of the game, um, a bit of updates on Willock and Shelby. Eddie Howe said in his presser that Joe has had an issue with his tendon in his knee for a while. We thought we solved the problem, but it's come back. He needs a period of rest. He's had a couple of injections but we anticipate it'll be fine for pre-season. John Joe has quite a serious calf injury, which is similar to the one he sustained at the start of the season. He'll be out for a period of time, but we expect him back for pre-season with no problems. So that tells me that um, Sean Longstaff is probably going to keep his place on Monday night mm. because of two injuries to Willock and Shelby, unless um, he brings somebody else to set midfield, which I can't really see, but it's a good time for Sean to get, try and get a run in. Um, but yeah, we, are we going to miss these two lads, Steve, for the, for the rest of the season? I mean, on a level of 
Premier League status, no, but um, yeah, I think I think we definitely will miss him. Look, I, I I've said it many times about the long staffs. Um, I just think their careers are best probably moving on from the club. I don't have anything against them. I don't hate them. I just don't think that with the level that we think that we're going, that they are going to be like consistently starting because at the end of the day, we can improve upon them. Um, same thing with like Miggy and same thing with a few other guys. We can improve on them. Um, that, 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 that's my take on it. But yeah, there'll definitely be a miss for the Arsenal game, but we'll see. With the, the, the thing that I'm optimistic about with the Arsenal game is that when you get them up against it from the start, they start to lose their heads earlier than most other teams do. Uh, panic decisions, uh, just discipline. Discipline has been one of Arsenal's biggest problems over the past few years, I think. Um, just wrong time to be aggressive, wrong – um, decision making and stuff like that. So that's what I'm optimistic about because we're, for the most part, we're a pretty calm, cool, and collected team. We keep very focused in games and stuff, and we don't ever look out of games. Um, obviously, a few other defeats would say otherwise. Um, for the most part, though, when we play a team um, at St. James's, we don't get played off the park, and we we always look like we could get something back in it. It's just the quality is the reason why we haven't at certain times to me. Yeah, um, be, be a big yeah. game. A be a big game. Like I say, we'll talk yeah. about them as a little bit later. Keeping up, keeping up to date with the um, the injuries, and this is a little bit better news. Ryan has returned to training yesterday. So that would have been Thursday, so now possibly three days training, which is great to see. He trained very well, so fingers crossed that he's fine. Both hmm. Trippier and Wilson would say they're very keen to start. But my job is to make sure I'm doing what's best for the team. We've got to make sure that they're fit enough to last a long period in the game. We'll make a decision based on the training week. So that kind of hints to me that possibly all three may be on the bench on Monday night. If one of them or two of them starts, especially Trippier Wilson, don't expect them to play more than, what, 70 minutes? Yeah. Because then you've got a game six days later, and you didn't want to have them out for two, three months. At the start of preseason, common sense prevails. Look after them, we're safe. Yeah. So yeah. Um, transfer business, which we do, we'll come on to some rumors a little bit later. But this was interesting, is that we could be restricted, and everybody, every Newcastle fan thought, oh, we're going to spend crack as here, we're going to go wild with money again. Eddie Howe's just calmed it down a little bit. I don't know how much of it he's just playing it down, or yeah. how much he's got a bit of truth in it. But yeah, I said that FFP does impact what we can do in the summer. But it doesn't mean that we're totally without ambition. We're well aware that we're going to have to change the squad and we have to make improvements, but it's going to be a difficult balance. We've sat down and discussed the squad. And I think we have a very good vision of where we want to take the team. Now the hard part comes where you have to reshape the squad, both ins and outs, and try to come back with a better squad. So that tells me there might be some little bit of wheeling and dealing to get out the club to balance the books a little bit. However, it doesn't necessarily say that Newcastle won't spend the cash. Don't expect, probably, I would say, you're not going to go crack as on 200 million over the summer. I think you need to find the balance of get rid of the Deadwoods, which I will come and ask Steve's opinion later on that. But that's that's it's interesting that then, Steve, because is he playing it down? Or is there some truth in that where we can't go crazy and spend loads of money? Um, I, I don't think it would be wise to go crazy and spend loads of money just because um, when you're part of a rebuild, you don't want to take things too fast because then you have a mix of players who are clearly not at that, um, not, you know, not at that level. But if you bring in another guy that is levels and levels above, doesn't necessarily mean that those players are going to um, be elevated. Like, you know, to me with Bruno, yeah. Um, it seems like that he's had such a positive impact um, on the team. Yeah, ex yeah, look, exactly. Look at the fun. But, but he looks so much better than the other players, and sometimes he's got to do it all on his own. That, well, having said that, Joe Linton has definitely elevated his level. Um, and, do you, and do you know what? Credit to you as well, Steve, because you did a video on Bruno Gomez where a lot of us didn't really know who he was, and obviously I know yeah. you watch. We take the mickey out, you're saying you've got seven, eight screens on the go. But this lad, I know you're going to take the mickey because he's American, but 
he called out that Bruno Gramera as will improve Newcastle. And you're true to your words, Steve, you're now your football. Mm. Always the daft Yank who doesn't know much and what have you because he's American and has his terms differently. But you called it, Bruno Gomez will be a star. You called it right from the beginning. You called it in January. And look at him now. He's literally head and shoulders above everybody. And I'm saying everybody ahead of ESM. He's ahead of Trippier. He is a standout performer. Yeah. I know it's early doors, but he looks, he, he looks like a talent, doesn't he? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the thing for me that I was so impressed with him about for throughout his whole career really is – He's not one of those players that he looks down at the ball when he's dribbling. He's always got his head up. He's always looking. He's got very quick feet. He's pretty good in tight spaces, decision-making. He knows He knows what he's doing, and he never really lacks confidence to me, even when we, we you know, the Man City game. He was still trying real, real hard to get something going, at least a goal. So there's so much to love about Bruno, um, and he – Wherever Bruno plays too, also what I've noticed is that his social media, whether it's him on his Twitter or if it's social media team, makes it very clear that he loves playing wherever he's at. When he's at Leon, it, remind, it reminded yeah. me a bit of ESM. I know ESM's calmed yeah. down a little bit because he's getting criticised, but yeah. very similar. Where you don't really see it nowadays with like social media accounts because they're run by you know agencies. Yeah, and, and these are the, probably the only two. Newcastle players that like to have a bit of banter and, you know, ESM's wind yeah. up the Machinus in the past and Bruno's come on. Trippier, yeah, trippier, yeah. The thing I liked about Bruno is when we got battered 5 nearly the other day, he came out and said, do you know what, fans, that's not good enough. We will that be wasn't next fun, yeah. He's the only player who publicly came out and done that. Tell, tells that yeah. he's only been around, what, four months? Yeah. I tell them not just he's a cheeky chappy because he comes across as quite like that. But he's also got a bit of, you know, his head screwed on a little bit. Yeah. Which is class. Which is class. Yeah, his English absolutely. is coming along brilliantly. Um, and the brawl answer that he's got with uh, Joe Litton, because Joe Litton's talked about Bruno timing this perfectly. I didn't know him before, but it's so good to have players of his quality. Since he's come over, I've tried to help him on and off the pitch. Great guy. I don't sing my terror song around the house like him, but sometimes I listen to it. So. <laughs> bit of tongue in cheek, obviously, because they're both got. Bruno's is just pretty basic. Bruno, Bruno. Whereas Joe Litton, we've obviously got he's Brazilian and it goes on for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of Joe Litton as well, he's mentioned the fans as well. He says, it's amazing. I've never played for such good fans. They come to me house, they ring me doorbell. I answered once and they just want to say hello. And that Hawaiian shit, obviously we've seen a lot of them now. Yeah. Um, that adds no context to NUFC and so on. I'm yeah. taking that to Brazil to wear this summer. So... Again, he seems to be um, again another one who's picking up the language really well and yeah. kind of understands a little bit. And he's got appreciation from the fans, which is great. We talked about that on the way trip to Norwich, where he just stood there for over a minute after the uh, players have walked off the pitch, and he just soaked it in, and uh, rightly so as well. Yeah. Um, Steve, an American, uh, but he lives in New England. Just ask him; he will tell sure. you. Yeah. New England. We live in the old England. Uh, Bruno has the magic. Yeah, that's it as well. Sorry, yes, I did forgot about that. Yeah, my apologies, Jordy. Um, they both got two fantastic long songs. How can I forget that when I'm there, home and away? Long day at work, man. Long day. Three hours. Um, continuing the good news. Uh huh. Goal of the month winner. Miggy, Miggy. Obviously, for copyright reasons, we cannot play it. But, but you guys have seen it. seen it. You guys have seen it. You have seen it. And, and oh. again, Bruno is heavily involved once again. Yep. From the throw-in, he chests it. You mentioned that vision looking around. Half volley slice. Pin perfect to ESM. Not ESM, Miggy, sorry. Miggy's got a lot of work to do because he's got to get past Mitchell, shrug him off, and then the finish. And I've criticised Miggy. What a finish. I said that was goal of the season. A couple of other lads didn't agree. For us, it's goal of the season. Oh, for us, yeah, I think so. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah, I think the one that rivals it maybe the Norwich goal from Joe Linton because that was a that was a lightning. Oh, oh, Callum Wilson overhead kick. I think oh. Harry likes the Wilson Sellers Park goal. I think this is way better. The pass and the finish and the technique from all of it is just beautiful. I think. Yeah, I would. I, I would tend to agree with you. It's yeah, just, just a sexy, beautiful goal, and those two link up pretty well as well. So, yeah. so contingent as well. Yeah. And um 
keeping with the good news as well, we were praising them earlier on. Manager of the season nominations. Look who is in that list, baby. So you've got Thomas Frank, who's done well for Brentford, keeping them up. Guardiola, obviously, top of the league. Looks like they're going to win the Premier League unless they massively slip up. Jurgen Klopp, of course, potentially could win the triple slash quadruple, depending on the FA Cup score at the minute. Eddie Howe, you know, will be sitting, third, I think it's third in the table if the league started from January. And Patrick Vieira, who's done a sound job. First of all, who should, right, we're going to say Eddie Howe, but where do you think the vote will actually go? I mean, uh, you'd probably have to say, uh, you'd probably have to say Pep Guardiola. I mean, I voted for Eddie Howe, obviously, but if I was, it would be, it would be Pep because, I mean, results speak for themselves. I mean, he's, he, he's always got to deal with a huge squad with tons of quality. And it does that, you know, that does sound super easy because it's like, Everywhere you look, from goalkeeper to striker, you've got class players. You could have two or three starting 11s that might win you any other game in the Prem. But it's the ego management of all of that because Ferran Torres left in January, and it's it, it's all about making everyone happy. And that's not easy to do when you have such a huge squad. With all you've got it, you've got to be so good in the term in terms of man management. Um. So that that to me, I mean, Klopp should be probably second place, yeah, because you know what he's doing with Liverpool's been amazing. But I think what I think, I think the neutrals will probably go for those two. Yeah, obviously Eddie Howe is rightly nominated for the sensation yeah. job. I talked about it twenty minutes ago, the job that he's well, like not fifteen minutes ago, the job that he's done at Newcastle, and obviously those journalists that we're talking about will probably just say, oh, it's just money. Or what have you, but what a job he's done to have Newcastle yeah. go so many games unbeaten. And then from the from literally five points adrift, and it's just brilliant. And it's great to see him manager of the season. Alan Pardew won it one year. Yeah. So you just never know. But I I don't think you'll win it, but it's fantastic to see him nominated. And obviously I've voted, of course, every yeah. year to vote vote from yeah. as well. Interesting. This he should one, be top do you think he should be top three out of those yes. five? If you look at that, if you look at the other two, I think he's done a better. Thomas Frank has kept Brentford up, which is fantastic. It's brilliant for them. If I, if if Eddie Howe doesn't make a top two, it has to be him, Eddie Howe third, and then I would say Vieira, just over Frank. Me. I mean, the thing that's impressed me with Thomas Frank is that there were times this year they started off really well. I think what unbeaten and. Yeah, and then the five or six. Like... But then, so what's impressed me about Thomas Frank is that he's ridden the waves of being like, oh, we could go back. To be honest, Brentford were really never up against it, even when they lost three, four games or winless, or, you know, in a certain amount of time. He always rode the waves. So I, I was definitely impressed with Frank. And with Vieira, I mean, if you look how much change has happened with Palace over the summer, they had like seven or eight free agents. Um, it was. Man, unreal. Of the nationals now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Out wide. Fantastic out wide. They've got pace. And you could say, and, 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 but why I would have Eddie Howe above those two is because Eddie Howe's done both. He's ridden the good waves and the bad. He started off also six months later than those two guys. And he, you know, excellent spending in the January transfer window. Just because you spend money. Doesn't mean that your players are just gonna bang right in form. It doesn't. It doesn't work like that. And also, we haven't, like I said, we haven't had Kyle Molson for majority of the season and Trippier, and then a few other knocks here and there have made things complicated. But Eddie Howe's got it. So, to me, I think third place out of Eddie Howe. But yeah, and it's, and it's just mad to think that you know, come January, any of our managers will be nominated. I know is bunk as, but um. Last story before we'll get on to transfer rumours is that uh, a couple of houses, which is, I don't know if you, if you don't know what that is, Steve, um, it's basically like um, changes in businesses. That we have to list them on the government's website. Right. Um, so you might have seen this. Um, he's, he's normally with, um, not far off, Amanda Stavely in the, um, the director's box and the, the posh sheets. Um, Ahid al Soro, who... Obviously, there's a picture in front of Amanda Stavey, but obviously yeah. you haven't got the picture here. 
chairman of Saudi Golf has been named as a director at Newcastle, mm. according to the company's houses. So he's now on the board. Obviously, we know that we've got Jamie Rubin and his sports company. We know we've got the PCP Capitals, of course, PIF. And um, I think this is probably, would you go along with this? This is more the PIF, PIF just having an extra man instead of Yasser al Rumiyan, just an extra yeah. body there. Yeah, exactly. Probably get accustomed to how um, the transition of, oh, the, you know, this is England and Saudi Arabia, just bringing another guy Someone along. Permanent. Someone huh? permanent, I think. Yeah, yeah. Commercial guy, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, um, to be honest, I don't, I don't know much about the guy, but to be honest, is I, I, I have, um, I've got outstanding confidence in the owners because what have they screwed up so far? You can't really credit like what have they done wrong so far for us? I can't, I can't and, think. I'd be nitpicking. And I think, I think the first time that they ever do something wrong. We've just got to take a seat back and think, wait a minute, we just had Mike Ashley. They're allowed to get one or two things wrong. He's yeah, exactly. Like, you, no one wrong. is infallible. No one is infallible. Everyone makes mistakes. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, move on to some transfer rumours because I, everybody knows I hate them. I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of them because it's based on falseness, basically. Well, what I'll do, we'll rate it on a, on a spectrum, uh, Steve. We'll do something a little bit different out of 10, what the truth factor is of these. Calvert Lewin, Dominic Calvert Lewin. How much do you believe, this is from the Telegraph, that Newcastle want to put a bid in for him? Obviously, he hasn't had the greatest season with injuries. We need a striker, definitely, because of Callum Wilson's injuries. How much of this would be true? I guess this might depend on what division Everton are in. Right. I think it's actually very true. I wouldn't be surprised because if you think about it, we did the same to Burnley. Um, we took their striker off them. So I, I, I've i got a very confident feeling in that. I'm not a, I'm not a huge DCL guy. I, I, I think he's a bit overrated. I think aerially he can, he can be very good, but I don't think he's that great of a footballer, technically speaking. Um, you think you'll go at the World Cup? Too hit or miss. He's too hit or miss for me. He's too inconsistent. Okay. Um, he'll either score in five games in a row, and then it's like the rest of the year you get maybe a few. It, it, it's just too inconsistent for me, uh, for my liking. There are other players that I think would be cheaper for us, and maybe they're not prem proven or whatever, but they're younger. Only thing that, yeah. <laughs> Mackham's doing it, believe it or not, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but, yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not huge on DCL. I don't think he's a bad player, but there are many other players I'd rather pick. The thing is you gotta look at it and think, right, okay, uh, we need somebody to score goals. He's partly proven, I would say. Yeah. Um the next guy, I think there was some truth in this, but I don't think there was as strong as this. Now we were heavily linked to James Tarkowski for quite a while earlier on the season, on it, but this time around, he's available on a free, according to the Mirror. Mm. We have, it's fair to say, in a Steve, we've got a lot of average centre backs. Yeah, at the club, um, and I don't mean to be, but let's face it, they're not going to take it to the next level. So I'm talking like uh, Fernandez, even Dummett, who signed a year's a contract extension, Jamal Lascelles. Mm. They're not going to take it to that next level. I think Dan Byrne and Fabian Shea are okay for now, but it's an area that I think we need to strengthen. Is he any better than Jamal Lascelles? Yeah, he is better. Yeah, but we better, that... or... huh? We're better or marginally better? Yeah, I would say bet marginally. Um, it, it's not an exciting purchase necessarily. Again, I think that would be. I'd rather go for someone else, but I, I wouldn't hate the move necessarily. I just think that we should look at someone younger and, you know, really like how many, if you look at the successful sides, you know, around Europe, how many of them really buy from their domestic league or buy from the cheaper one? Like it's, 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 uh, I think that to me for, if it, you know, if I had it my way and stuff like that, I would give, I would, I would be, you know, really working on the academy and scouting and buying young players and that and that sort of thing to me. Um, I'm not sure how old. I think Tarkovsky's, what, 30? 
ish. Yeah, he's at that age. He's, he's up like, there. I just, I, really I think we could. Clark, you would think Kevin Clark's out the door. Yeah. Fernandez possibly. Yeah. So I could see, I could see being a squad player at best, but yeah, squad player. Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't be, like I said, I wouldn't be mad at it, but you know, I think, I think there are some other center backs around Europe or or the prime, if you want to look at it that way. That I that I'd rather take a chance on, to be fair. But yeah, I mean, there's plenty of transfer rumors going about. I mean, we had um, Rafinha linked as well. I mean, I'll take mm. it it'll, t- it'll cost a lot of money, I think. Um, but um, some inside with Leeds thinking that he wants the Barcelona move. Whether he's good enough for boss, I don't know. But if you've got too many attackers, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, we have Rafina on one side and ESM on the other. That's pretty dangerous. But I think Rafina has a massive upgrade on ESM because he's got and more product. Goals. That's it. Yeah. He's got more goals. He's got more goals. So I'll take Rafina and a Harpy if that transfer could be done. There's loads that uh, I'm not going to go through loads, but um, the one that caught my eye today was Keith, uh, Keith Downey come out and said this as well. And on Lodi. That's it. Yeah, the Brazilian left back is a player have Newcastle have looked at and could potentially form a part of their summer plans. Fifteen times capped Brazilian international left back Newcastle have already done business of late with Atletico for fellow fullback Kieran Trippier. Tell us a little bit about him, Steve. I like him a lot. Um, this would definitely, if you know, over the summer, I'll talk about. I'll have videos, ten days, ten leagues, and I'll pick a player from every side and. Stop, you know, Europe's top five leagues. For Atletico, he would definitely be up there. Um, defensively, I think he's actually pretty good. Um, good first touch, can score you the occasional goal. Um, good vision. Like, he, he is a very solid player. He's also pretty versatile. He could play left mid um, in a 3-4-3. So I, I'm a big fan of, of Renan Lodi, to be fair. Um, and I think Atletico are selling him way cheaper than I would you know, I, I, I thought that he would have gone for. So I'm a big fan of him, and I think he's physically – he'll do fine in the Prem and whatnot. So I'm all for I'm all for the Brazilian contingent at, uh, at Newcastle. I, I, I think there's two things here that are Atletico going to allow another fullback to leave for the same club because – Maybe, yeah. It's, it's a tough one. Um, because their management, Simeone and the, the coach and staff and the hierarchy were thinking, we, had, we can't let this happen twice. And secondly, is it fair on Matty Target? Matty Target has been pretty consistent. Right. And I think Matty Target deserves to have his loan move made permanent. Is he the yes, long-term answer? me answer? too. Me too. Long-term answer? No. But for this phase of what we're in, where we're trying to rebuild and get to that next level, Target he is completely proven, good enough. Completely he's proven for now. Yeah. yeah. For the short and medium term, that target can be your first team and then possibly a squad player. <clears throat> because Matt Ritchie's out the door, I think, in the summer. And Jamal Lewis, I think I think Lewis will be loaned out for a season to gain yeah. his confidence. So the will that could be strengthened. But I wouldn't be against Matt Target for the same price just for now. Right. Would you go along with that or would you take No, I would I would I would buy I would buy Matt Target 100%, and I would, I would tell him over the summer, like we might be looking at a left back just for you know, because we want to maybe we want to go far in all the competitions um, and get, let's say, Target for Newcastle next year is uh, top seven, top eight, uh, semifinals of FA and Carabao Cup. Maybe that's the goal. So you're gonna need a squad if you want to accomplish that sort of thing, right? So I think that'd be completely fair. Um, I think Target's been tremendous. He's been underrated because he's he doesn't do a lot of brilliant he's stuff glamorous. offensively. He's glamorous, is he? Yeah, yeah. But like so, I guess you know, like I said, it's a it's it's a necessary purchase. And it, it'd be he you know, to have him as a left back and he could be a backup at times, that's great strength off the bench. That's great. And if someone gets injured, if let's say we do bring in right on Lodi, that would be a f- perfectly fine replacement no one would be freaking out necessarily if we if Lodi got injured or whatever and we had Matt Target play all the games that's the thing about it too is that he's a perfectly he's starter quality but he's also if you can convince him and if he's cool with playing um I think I think think it'll happen because you'll not want to play a second fiddle to look at Dina yeah, exactly. Still I've, still, I've got a decision to make. Do we cash in for 15 million? That's the alleged price. I think that's both for good, good yeah. both parties. And 
I think that's something that I could see happening. That we talked about the the you know financial fair play a little bit earlier. That will ha- hamper Newcastle, but they've got to balance the books up. Yeah. Um, but you know we'll we'll discuss all of that more in the summer. But players heading out is the last one I wanted to talk about. Um, I think there's a lot of truth in these. A lot. Newcastle are willing to let go of the following players according to the Telegraph. The only one I would probably keep out of that is probably Isaac Hayden. And that's because of two, well, no, two reasons, yeah. Because he's versatile and he's the only one who is an out-and-out defensive midfielder. Yes, Newcastle don't play with that right now, an out-and-out defensive midfielder. Yeah. I think having him there, plus it's it's a tick that you've got a British, because you've got to have eight homegrown players. Hayden will tick that box. Yeah, He's probably the only one I'd be more than happy to see the rest of them go. Same what, thing, yeah. I agree. I agree there. with you. Yeah, I would say Isaac Hayden out of that too. Um, Fe- clearly, Eddie Howe doesn't rate Federico Fernandez. Whatever, that's that's his choice. Uh, Darlow, I think he should try and go get football in the championship or something. I um, think we can improve upon the goalkeeping spot. Matt Ritchie has been a great servant to the club. I think you can make you could maybe make an argument that keep him around because he does seem like a guy where he's very good in the locker room. He's a good mentor for younger players and whatnot. Um, I think his legs are gone. But his like, yeah. But he can't put a goal, you know, when you, if you can play somehow where he gets space and can deliver balls into the box, that could be an asset if someone gets injured. But he hasn't been playing much under Eddie Howe. So I guess like leaving him go, yeah, probably the right choice. Um, but I agree with you about Isaac Hayden. I would say keep him. Yeah, there's a couple of the lads who want rid of him, and I'm like, this, he, you know, he's been consistent for quite a while. He's yeah. not flash, but you know, for the time being, you know, you can have him there because if we're going to play three in midfield, you effectively need six. Yeah, because rotation, injuries, yeah. suspensions, three games in a week sometimes. It's going to come. It's going to come. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, I'm going to change the uh, the graphic around a little bit. Um, ooh, zoomed in uh, because I'm going to open up the exciting uh, tactical pad where me and Steve are going to be chatting. I'll make a full screen all yeah. about first the Arsenal side, and um, we'll also have a look at Newcastle very very shortly. Now, um, if I pull, if I can get back on the screen, I was on. Here we go. Right. So um, let me change this to Arsenal. And you've got the Arsenal players. I don't know if you can see that, speed, but we know that Rob Holden is suspended. So we know that yeah. he won't play. Gabriel is 50 50 for the game. But mm. if you take him out, I think Ben White, he, did, he, he didn't play, but he wasn't yeah. on the bench. White will come in. But if Gabriel doesn't play, they've got a serious issue uh, at centre back. They might have to do Xhaka at centre back or El Nani or something like that. Um, this is a big chance. This is a big chance for us. And to be honest, I. I think that if you're Mikel Arteta, you have Champions League on the line. You you kind of have to. You might have to make that risk where you play Gabriel or Ben White, even though they might not be a hundred percent. Because it's like you have so much to lose if you if if you drop points again um, away to Newcastle. So I think they've. I think one of them are going to play, whether they're hundred percent or not. I think, um, I think I think Arsenal might risk them. I think they'll go with White and yeah. Um Tommy Asu played left back, but we know that um, Tavares can play there. Who yeah. do you think is going to get that nod here? Yeah, but also Tommy Asu can play centre back too. So I wouldn't okay. be surprised if they switch him up there. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I really like Tommy Asu. To be fair, he's I think, very very I good think, in Bolo- at Bologna, and I, I think that's a very smart transfer. It's cheap for them and it's versatile. He's a pretty intelligent player. I, I, I like him a lot, Tomiyasu. Do you think he'll start there? Or do you think Tavares? Because I remember at um, the Emirates, Tavares was really good against him. Yeah, I, I would say good. I would say Tavares would start. Uh, do you think Tomiyasu will change to right back? Or do you think he's dropping? Cedric plays again. I'd say Tommy, uh, to me, I, like I watched, the, I watched the game on Thursday when they played Spurs. And Cedric just got, he got torn apart. So I would say Tomiyasu at right. At right back, mm-hmm. um, for me, and then in set midfield, then um, really, you've got El Neni, Xhaka, and Odegaard. Party uh, isn't available. Well, obviously, Q and T 
Tierney is injured as well. Yeah, I haven't got massive squad depth. Lukonga could come in there. Sambi Lukonga's all right. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he's still super will... young? Super young. Yeah. Maybe. Do you think this will be the three, or do you think Lukonga will come in? Uh What do you think Smith Rowe might be put in midfield? Yeah, I would say Smith Rowe in midfield. Do you think? Yeah, yeah, because he he didn't look that bad to be honest when um, he came on as a sub had a had a well, chance in the, in the center. So yeah, who, if he's center, who we, who we, who we're pulling out here? Probably El Nani, to be honest. El Nani will go at the bench, and I imagine Odegaard will have a little bit of a deeper role. Yeah, and then Smith Rowe to to attack. Right, um, Saka will play. I think that's pretty obvious. Yeah, Saka. I was nominated for Young Player of the Year. And then the question then, then, is it Martinelli or is it Pepe? Probably Pepe because Martinelli might be injured. Um, injuries are really screwing him over, to be honest. It's, uh, it's pretty – it, He normally plays on the right, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, Saka could go probably left. That's the other thing. good thing about Saka is he's super versatile. So I wouldn't be surprised if – it's Pepe Saka, yeah, probably okay. something like that. If there any is disagree in the comments, this is Steve's team, not mine, by the way. Just letting you know. Um, right. And Ketia, do you think he'll continue to play? And Ketia, yeah, yeah. I don't see, I don't see Lacazette really getting. Clearly, Arteta doesn't rate him. He's not playing that much, so I would say, yeah, I'd probably say. Kedia will go in. Yeah, so that's the Arsenal side. We'll look at the battles in a second. We're going to have a look at uh, what you are saying in the comments before we move on to the tune. Uh, thank God we're not getting Lingard. Please note to DCL. Uh, Liverpool win the FA Cup on pen. 6-5. Mount misses the vital penalty. First time I've seen flares in a while in England. Jesus Christ. Like yeah. actual flare. Damn. Not after mine, is it? Fence she was one. <laughs> Right. What's a fence chewer, if you don't mind me asking? I'll let them, um, I'll let, I'll let Maggot explain that. Um, so <laughs> that's the, um, right, that's the, let's, let's get back to what I was on about because that's laughing. Right, Newcastle team. Yeah. Um, I think we're pretty much see it'll be Dubravka. I'd imagine Fabian Shea, Mighty Target. Tell me if you disagree on anything on this. Mm. Um, who else we got long down here? Uh, where is he? Where's Big Dan Burn? There he is, live lad. Question then: Does he risk Trippier, or does he continue with Kraft? I would say play Trippier just because it is the last home game of the season, and I think Trippier will want to play a lot uh, because you know it is the last home game of the year. So I I don't I don't see why not. Why wouldn't he be able you know be able to play? But um. To be honest, if Kraft plays, I'm not super worried about that either. To be honest, because Kraft has been, you know, a player that I didn't I didn't think of very highly at all. But under Eddie Howe, he's gotten he's gotten a lot better, more consistent. So, so Steve, uh, Kieran Trip, I will get the nod if he does start. Yeah, he's not going to play the full ninety. Yeah, um, I'd be very surprised. The midfield yeah. three because of injuries that picks itself, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Joe Linton, Gimaraj, Longstaff. Yeah. Right. Next question then. Almiron st- continues or does Jacob Murphy get run out? I I wasn't a huge fan of Jacob Murphy um when we played City. I don't I, to be honest, I'm not really either yeah, one. Yeah. I would probably say I'd probably s- I'd say Almiron just because I know he can finish. The problem with Murphy is that he gets himself into good positions and stuff, but then when he's got to put the ball in the net, it just never happens for him for whatever reason. Um, I think Miggy's got a little bit more end product than him, to be fair. So, Yeah. Yeah, seven on the left. Might, over, might interact and change. Yeah. Swap things. And again, question then, does he risk Wilson or does he go safe and go with Wood? He might go Wood. He might go Wood, to be honest, because we don't need another setback to start the beginning of next year because um, 
even Kyle Wilson is a backup striker. That's perfectly fine. And that's probably what he should be at this point in his career, just because of the injuries. Um, they've really screwed him over, to be honest. So I oh, would. I love this feature. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> 3D. Yeah. So this, is, this is what um, Steve thinks because he's the, well, he's not the guest, but he, I'm controlling this. Um, so this is the, this is the team's. Uh, we could be wrong in a couple of positions. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so we think Bruno, Joe Litton, Sean, Smith Rowe might be put into centre midfield with, with Odegaard yeah. dropped a little bit back with Jack Almiron over on the right. Uh, over on this left hand side, you've got Alan St. Maximum over here, up against Tommy Asu, uh, Chris Wood, um, up against White and Gabriel, and Tavares will come in on there. So, yeah, interesting. Mm. Now, um, battles. Where is the game going to be won and lost? Stop it's going to be... I think it's going to be a real dogfight between uh, Joe Linton and Xhaka, to be honest. Um, because both of them don't mind getting physical and getting involved in, you know, the emotional side of the game and, you know, just little fouls to mess with the opponent. I think that's going to be big. Yeah. Um, and if I already how, one thing I'm telling my guys is, Piss off Xhaka. Get in, get in his head because we know he's going to lose it eventually yeah, taking, if you taking, push his buttons. Yeah, he's taking time bomb, isn't he? Exactly. And also with two unfit center backs, you'd think, you've got to target them. We've And Chris Wood really has to physically start, you know, just getting getting a little bit nasty. Getting Not, a, not just a little bit, getting nasty. Um, not to where we get a red, but, you know – really take advantage of the fact that this team Arsenal at times can be um, they could be mentally weak at times and they can make bad decisions. So for me, that's, that's what I'm seeing it as. It's going to be a dog fight. Um, yeah, we'll have a question. We, should, we should make it into a dog fight. Make, make St. James's park hell on earth to play. Uh, Jordy, I don't think you will. I don't think Murphy will start. Um, I think it'll be maybe, um, and if Wilson plays, Murphy will cross from the right where Miggy will cut in like ASM. Good, good shout. Uh, yeah. yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll get back. Keep your comments coming in. Um, start giving us your score predictions as well. Please do. Um, yeah. I think where the other key battle for me, personally, for looking at Arsenal, is this fella. Let me get the right, uh, right <laughs> circle on him. Smith Rowe. Smith Rowe, yeah. I think he's he's so much improved the last probably 18 months or so. Yeah. We know fine well that he's pretty direct. And if he is mm -hmm. playing in the centre, if I can get this blooming on the go. There we go. He's gonna he's he's gonna want to have the freedom for these areas. Yeah. So make great runs into the box. Yeah, yeah, so he's gonna get he's gonna get the end if for cutbacks, crosses, what have you. So you mentioned Joe Linton and Jacka. Would it be better for Joe Linton to sit on Smith Row? Because I, yeah. I'm not well, with he's gonna be game. Yeah, with the pressing, Joe Linton's really good at it. Bruno's yeah. Ramirez, long stuff. Th is that enough to stop that run? Because I think that's the threat. I think you can get tight to Odegaard because he, he likes to be a dictator, doesn't he? He likes to, he yeah. likes to have the ball move around. Play through might, him. You might even see Odegaard trying to get up as well. Yeah. You know, in Arsenal, need a win because they're, they're, they're trying to get the Champions League position. And, and obviously their defeat yeah. against the rival Spurs was a disaster for them the other day. Yeah. So I think that's one. Yeah. Now, the other one, I think Saka. He's no. been quiet recently, though. He hasn't he hasn't been playing at his best, to be fair. But yeah, he he's got that quality. He's got he's got it. But I think if, if he's if he's over here, I think I'm pretty comfortable with Trippier. Yeah, and I mean, then, too. Yeah. and Fabian Shea obviously sweeping behind if needs be. I'm pretty comfortable with that. If Saka's over on the the other side, I'm a little bit less confident because I think Trippier can do a better job. Yeah, but I'm all right with it. But Saka loves a goal against us. He does. He does. Yeah, it's he almost like he wants to impress us every time. That's funny because his dad's a Newcastle fan. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I wanted to look at 
say it maximum because yeah. what's happened to him? What what's going on with him? Um, you know, it's back in front of the TV cameras. I can't even get I can't even get him circled. He's back in front <laughs> I don't know what I've done there, but he's back in front of the cameras. And if it is Tommy Osu, you would who would you favor who are you favoring? You would think at home in the, in a big crowd like ESM will get the better of him. But he's been so indifferent, hasn't he? He's been indifferent. He's trying the same thing over and over and over again. Um, I just, to me, it's like the whole it, it, the evolution of him. We haven't really seen it. That's that's my problem. Um, yeah, I just he, he's got to try something new. He's got to keep his head up more. He's got to learn from Bruno, man. He really does because it's like you've got to make quick decisions. You're in you're in the Premier League. You're not gonna have unlimited time on the ball. Like you've got to, you've, you've, you've got to, it's, it's, you can't just do, you can't be a one trick pony in this league. You really can't. So. So yeah, I think as soon as Wilson comes on this defense, I know Wilson had a chance against Edison. Yeah. Cause he stretched the defense. So yeah. we've got ESM coming in the left and we know what he does. He's, he wants to come in. He wants, you are right. You try to take on too many players, but if he does get the better of Tommy Asu, obviously that'll be over to Ben White to try and sweep up. Yeah. And if that's Callum Wilson here, I'm more confident. Me too. Me too. Chris Wood, we know Eddie Howe likes him because of what his style of football and he does a lot for the team, but he's not selfish like Callum Wilson is. Yeah. I think Wilson, and I've said it since January, since Chris Wood's come in, I think Wilson has a better chemistry with ESM because they've both got similar traits, the pacey. Yeah. It, it gives him space, and I think they'll link up a little bit better. I feel more comfortable if it is Wilson, but you are right. It's a risk, in, and I think it's even a risk playing Trippier start from the off. But if, if if either one or even both of them start, like I said, I don't think it'll be more than seventy minutes. I think it's safe. You know, if Newcastle will need this game, pick up points. Fair enough. Just keep yeah. them on. Safety's safety's more priority, but we don't need that. Can can you see any others? I mean, what do you make of Ramsdale this season? Is he contender for goal, um, goalkeeper of the season? Definitely up there. Um, for me personally, I think my goalkeeper of the season, if I was making it, in my opinion, it's been Jose Sa. It's been Jose Sa from Wolves. Um, of recent, he's struggled a lot. Uh, I think Wolves are just kind of falling apart a little bit. But the money they signed him for, who he was replacing, you know, he's he's performed extremely well for me. He's made, he's had dozens of games where he's made world class saves and. He, he bails them out of trouble a lot when you know their back three does break down. I've been I've been so impressed with Jose Sa. I really have. So that would be would be my goalkeeper of the season personally. But Ramsdale's up there and Allison, I would say. Yeah, he's had a good season, and I was yeah. critical. I looked at that fee and I went thirty million for a goalkeeper has been relegated two years running. But yeah, um, it'll be interesting yeah. if we can test them as well. So. It's 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 one of them with with Arsenal. You just you didn't know what, what it's a bit like that Forest Gum. Life's like a yeah. box of chocolates. You just never know what you're going to get. It's a bit like with Arsenal, whereas yeah. they're fantastic, and then they go and get beat off uh, Spurs three 0 and yeah. then they get to make up at St James's Park and rip with Park because they're good on the ball. They've always been decent. Yeah, but, you know it's it's Newcastle's final home game this season. It's a nighttime game. You know people will be having a few of these. You know yeah after work and. The War atmosphere. flags are going to have an incredible display, oh, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, I can't wait to say that. The final home yeah. game this season. Yeah. Um, what you're going to go with finally for some score predictions? Give me. Uh, I think Arsenal are going to screw it up. I really do. I think I'm going to go Ryan. He is, yeah. Um, Saka's dad is a Newcastle fan. He used to take yeah. Saka to two games, believe it or not. Yes. Look. I think I think after that, after that, uh, I agree. After that game against Spurs, I think that's their confidence done. They're not gonna have fit center backs. Think we could get a one a one nil. Um, you reckon? You confident? Yeah, yeah. Because as long as we get in their face and you know we piss them off, essentially, especially Jaka. I mean, the guys, a red card waiting to happen, or Tavares. He's he can sometimes make some rash decisions, so. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, I, I think I'm gonna take one nil. To be honest, 
I don't think Arsenal win this game. I'll, t- I'll say that much. I don't think they'll win. I'm actually going to agree with you on the win for change. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to say 2 1. 2 1. But I think Arsenal will just nick fourth place. I think Spurs will Spurs it up. Because well, they, yeah. they're very similar to Arsenal. They look great and then they, then they look absolutely shocking. Yeah. So I think it could be literally down to a point for the top four. Who's getting top four for you? To me, I'm going to go Spurs because I rate Conte infinitely ahead of Arteta. Uh, I think they've got a striker. Uh, you know, Arsenal don't have a number nine like Harry Kane. Um, I just, I, I see Conte, Conte, you know, you, you give him, you give him whatever and he'll make it work. So I think, I think Spurs, I think Spurs will get top four, to be honest. I think that game on Thursday is a massive, um, confidence booster. Yeah, right? exactly. And for Arsenal, that could be, we'll see how they react. Um, to me, whenever I watched Arsenal under Arteta, when the tough gets going, they get going too. Um, they just, they don't. I don't know. Just something's off about them. I, I don't see. It. I, I, I boys own song that tough gets going. Yeah. Um, Spurs play Burnley. Yeah, and other, play. Yeah. Now I think I think right now, I think Arsenal will get the top four. I think they will. I think it will be very. But if we're beat, wait, wait, wait. If we're beating them, though, you think we'll beat them? Well, Spurs might only get a draw against Burnley. Burnley, Burnley are fighting for their lives. Yeah. So the Norwich game, I agree with Jordy. I think that will be at a canter. But I think Arsenal can win the last game of the season as well. So I think it could come down to literally a point or a goal difference. Yeah. Um, but I do think that we, we've got... There's nothing scares me on Monday night. It's not no, like... Me either. Me either. Just a you're turning up or a Liverpool's turning up. This is Arsenal. You just don't know what you're going to get. Me either. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not that scared either, to be honest. And if the beat was fair enough, and we've got yeah. one of the one of the boys from EFTV on tomorrow, <laughs> so you'll see one of those guys. Uh, they're going to be doing a video with Johnny. So yeah, so stay tuned for that. They'll have the Arsenal perspective. But that has been me and Steve. Um, the other the, the lads, guests were meant to come on. Have been in traffic, so I've just been checking my phone. Great, uh, but we've done a good job. I think me and Steve have done a good job tonight. Um, right. So we've talked about uh, press conference. If you want to rewind, we've talked about transfer rumours. That kit that seems to be doing the rounds that everyone's getting a little bit upset about as a Newcastle fan. And of course, we've looked at Eddie's press conference and uh, we've looked at the tactical pad as well. Should have a go at that, Steve. You should get it downloaded. It's free. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. Steve predicts a one 0 win. I predict a two one win. Um, Johnny will be with you tomorrow. Uh, with one of the EFTV lot. But for me and Steve, enjoy your night, everyone.